need to get another patriotic item done. All right, so we're gonna use a 15 to 14 inch work frame. I've got two rolls of 10 inch mesh. The camera is crooked. Hey, hey. Great workshop this weekend. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Y'all, I just looked over and noticed that uh, Mel left a little bit of mesh from her flower earlier, and we may use it first. All right, let's get our frame ready. So we're gonna do uh, eight to 10 inch poofs along the inside here. And I'm gonna use this lighter color blue for that. Hopefully we have enough. What's up, Kelly Hedberg? Missy liked the fish arrangement. So don't forget if you have scrap mesh from other projects that you can always use it as part of your base. The frame looks deeper than usual. This is the normal one. I think it's just the camera angle. It's a little bit more angled than normal. So things look a little bit taller and skinnier. But I'm ready to relax. You know, there's no rest, no rest allowed. We got a busy week coming up for sure. Oh, she was trying to say bourgeois? You love the flower most of the day today with the sun. Is it too quiet, Janet? No, it's not. So if you guys don't know, uh, for the last three weeks I've been around a lot of people and uh, you know it's not really my thing so I'm glad to be alone in my workshop with y'all where you can hear me and I can't hear you so the first nope the last week of April and the first week of May, I was with our mastermind group. We came home on Thursday, we left on Saturday. We were gone a week. We came back, then the coaches were here. So it's been like three weeks of a lot of people. All right, so we did, y'all, I did eight inch poofs only because I didn't know if I was gonna have enough mesh to do 10, but I would have. And I went with this lighter color mesh because in this ribbon, we have the lighter base color. All right, now we're gonna do our ruffles. Uh, the dogs are good with the company. 
Y'all, we've got a royal blue stripe, and then we've got a, I'm just gonna call it a picnic table. Get the bathroom door placed. What? What did we put in the mac and cheese? Uh, ragu, double cheddar, and queso. That was it. All right. Y'all, we are gonna cut 10 of these at 25 inches. Where you been, Jerry? Six. Eight. All right, we need two more at 25. All right, now we need eight at 18. Margie, I am enjoying the peace and quiet. Yep. Two. I said one of the doors to the bathroom was missing. Though there's no door there. The, the design doesn't have a door to the bathroom. Last cut. All right. Y'all, and I've still got all this mesh left over. Uh, Patty, the bird flew away. All right, I'm gonna start around the bottom with those uh, 28 inch ruffles. All right, so we're gonna take it. We're gonna curl that edge just a little bit. 96 degrees here in Massachusetts. Deborah, let me tell you what's happening here. So in New Orleans, for about a two month period, whenever it rains and gets really hot, the termites come out of the ground and they swarm. So I'm waiting for them to find us in here. They had some outside. All right, so we're gonna do the two curls on each end. Uh, Megan Fugate, I just saw that you're coming back to Louisiana and you didn't even tell me. So, not impressed. Bowtie pasta. Uh, these were 25 inches, sorry. Give it a good twist. Fold it. Y'all, you don't have to do a lot of folding, just one or two curls. And we're just going to go all the way around the bottom. Yeah, they're 25. You got your greenery box, Peggy? Did you like it? Aw, oh, thanks, Carolyn. Ruffle. Yeah, termites of the night really hate those things. They're gross. 
And they literally eat you out of house and home. What the heck? They're like teenagers. It's also a little warm in here. I wonder if the AC's on. Uh, Real be my company. Yeah, I'm back in the office tomorrow, so back to peopling. Megan actually won't be in town, I don't think. I believe we'll be in uh, Chicago. How do you get a greenery box? I think the greenery box is sold out, um, but you can always go to decoexchange.com and check out the kits. Oh, you know what? They're not sold out. We listed some more. Liz, you can watch the barbecue workshop later, of course. They could destroy your products. No, the products aren't here long enough for them to destroy them. For real, termites, the ones that eat wood, yeah. So they're called Farmosa something termites? And they fly around. Then wherever they land, they look for wet places to uh, dig into the ground and start their colonies. Um, but, you know, if you get termite control and all that kind of stuff, they put uh, some, like, termite traps that whenever they land on the ground, they go to the traps instead of your structures. All of the warehouses are solid metal uh, and cement, so no worries here. Is there a place to go to see all the barbecues and the orders you get to them? Patsy, go into the group and then click on guides. And if you just work your way down the guide, everything will be in order for you. What's up, Cody? Cody, I saw your little uh, boo was busy, huh? Digging holes, all kind of stuff. All right, last ruffle around the bottom. Is that light blue poly burlap? So it's actually called a turquoise, um, but it looks light blue to me. I think we have the paper for it. Yeah, look. Stored right here. This one is RP8155M3. All right, so we did our 25 inch ruffles around the bottom. We've got eight inch poofs around the center. Now we're gonna do our, uh, let's see what size they were. 18. That's where the eight came from a while ago. 18 around the top. Same thing. Curl one side in on both. Give it a good pinch. Then we're gonna add this all the way around. Marlena, you made the beach ball and popsicle no so attachment. Isn't it cute? We're gonna use that in the creative coaching group this week.
How many inside poofs? One for every inside twist. So if you're not using the exact same frame as me, it could be different. What's up, Johnny? You love my shirt? Thank you. We did these shirts after one of the hurricanes. Y'all, that light blue is just there as a light uh, base filler. You're watching NASCAR and the College World Series, Women's College World Series. How fun. Whose method are you doing? I don't call people's methods because I don't know who created them first. We're doing ruffles and poofs. Where can you find the pattern for the hamburger and hot dog Derek made? In the guides in the workshop. Must seem so quiet. It seems normal, Melody. Lisa joined Derek's group today. Awesome. She does some really cute projects in there, uh, both sewing and no sew. All right, two more ruffles. That's gonna be a big wreath. This is actually smaller than my normal ones. So this one is only 25 inches. I normally get them about 27 to 28. Uh, it says Louisiana strong. Leah, you posted something the other day, and I meant to message you, and I forgot what it was. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, I haven't talked to Leah in forever. All right, so there's our base. Let's find our sun. I'll have to think about what that was. It says every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue. I need some mountain squares. Now, y'all, I'm gonna be real honest. This feels like it's um, a pound or really close to a pound. Uh, anything that has a little bit of weight to it, I'm not gonna use mounting squares. I like to use the mounting squares on the thin wood, uh, the lightweight metal. This one, I feel like it may eventually put too much stress on it. So I'm going to use the staple gun. Now, what you can do is you can use the mount.
So we put some gel super glue. We put our mounts. Then you could take your staple gun and you could staple the edge of the mount. Y'all, my top of it was plugged in. Well, maybe we can. Y'all, it may not be able to uh, grip the flat surface. So I was able to staple across the mount and into the wood. So if you're using a heavy sign, I would not use just the mount. Did Mel make it home? Uh, she texted a few seconds ago, but I was live, so I don't know what she said. I know she doesn't get, like, home till late, though. Watch my fingers? Oh, it's good. Okay, also, side note. Uh, you guys know the staple gun is new. I got it from Home Depot. Um, whenever I was there again yesterday, I grabbed the cheaper one just because I told you guys there was a cheaper one that you could try out. I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. So this one was like $70. It's really heavy. Whenever you put it down, the weight of the gun helps you keep the pressure. This one was like $25. It's super lightweight, but whenever you push it down and you pull the trigger, it doesn't, uh, it, I don't know. It like, it's not as good. So I'm going to stick to the heavier one and I'm going to keep recommending the heavier one. What did I do with the flower that Mel made? Um, I think she left it over there. Gonna add our hot glue. Do I ever remove the white part of the mouth? So you see exactly what I do. Once that glue dries, we're going to put uh, staples in there. You need to design one for us. I need to design one what? Let's make our bow while that dries. Y'all, I'm actually using one of the ribbon kits because it was already put together and I didn't have to go shopping.
Mel's talking about riding a bicycle. I don't know what's going on. All right. So we're gonna measure out about 12 inches. You're gonna give it a good pinch. The staple gun takes any of the staples. I use one quarter inch. You're gonna to wanna to use the smallest staple that you can so it doesn't go through your uh, signs. All right, let's go out about six and a half to seven inches. Angie likes watching the bows. It's fun. All right, we're gonna cut this one about eight inches. Design a staple gun. I don't think that's in my future. brand is Arrow. All right, our loop's just gonna get a little bit smaller. Christina figured out a recipe for her wreaths and she knows what to charge. Boom. If you sign up today, it will be with the June subscription box. It should be. Uh, if you read the sales page, it normally has it written um, right there. Uh, Cheryl said that she ordered two vinyl signs and she doesn't know what to do with them. If you go to our blog, you can uh, read how we use those. Uh, advertising browse singles. Sabrina, so we can't control what Facebook allows to market on our page. But typically, uh, the advertising is very specific to the people that are watching. So. There's always that. All right, last loops. Also, those ads are how a lot of creators make money. So Facebook pays us to put those ads on our page. So, if you enjoy the video, just watch the ad. All right, we're gonna slide our bow off. We're gonna give it a good pinch and twist it. All right, if you get it nice and tight, your loops will just pop up in the air. I don't clean mine up until we get it back on the project. All right, normally I have regular pipe cleaners, but uh, Tammy cleaned up, so I have no idea where they went. So I'll just cut these. I make bow moking look so easy. Phyllis, lots of practice.
Beth, I highly doubt you can insult me. All right. Y'all, on this one, I'm going to leave it long so I can tie it off in two different places. In the top, we're going to cut these. Is there a specific brand of pipe cleaning per? I only use the ones that we sell here at Deco Exchange, um, but you can get pipe cleaners anywhere. So we've got all of our pipe cleaners on here. Find the spot you want to add your sign. Do I usually take the stickers off the signs? I don't. So the turquoise is a two-tone. One is white and turquoise. Uh, how do you always get your signs to sit so nicely without squishing everything? Um, I don't know. The fishing door hanger is beautiful, nice colors on the bass, but you added seashells, and that fish is freshwater. Beth, I will give you two pieces of feedback. Number one, you bought it with seashells and bass on it. Number two, I didn't design it. So, no offense taken. You take your stickers off and staples on the rope. Uh, so personally, I can't see anything on the back of that sign, so no reason to fight with it. So if I was adding that to a grapevine wreath where the whole back was exposed, I may take a little bit more time on it. But whenever I know it's going right into a mesh wreath, there's no reason to fight with it. All right, so we've got our bow that we made. Nailed it. If it make listen, this is what I tell everybody about crafting. If there is something that you would think about and it would stop you from moving forward, even if it doesn't matter, do it, right? Like if you know by not taking off that sticker, it's gonna mess with your juju and you're gonna keep thinking about it and you're not gonna feel comfortable about it, rip off the sticker, right? Rip it off. Like, don't let something crazy like that be a barrier of something, right? Like, some people, they have to make sure every little white tip is missing or they don't think it's finished and they won't post it for sale. Have I heard from Joni lately? I'm pretty sure I saw her comment on one of the lives this week.
Um, if this was a, uh, the pulled method of the burlap, where the burlap is really tight and you see a lot of it exposed, I might take off the sticker. All right. Had to find my scissors. This is what we've got so far. Whoa. Y'all, we need some ribbon tails. Y'all, and that bow only has four ribbons in it. Y'all, I randomly need to sneeze. That's always fun. Looking forward to the next workshop. The next workshop, y'all, is going to be both creating and business. We're going to do it uh, summit style. Have you guys ever been to a conference? We're gonna do a, a virtual conference where we walk you through creating and business. Y'all, let's go for some 13-inch tails. So um, we're seeing, like, classes and Q&As and, like, panel talks. We're going to have the business and creative coaches come to town. It's going to be fun. All right. We're going to need nine of everyone. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A Mary Kay conference? Yeah, the only thing that's going to be different is I'm not going to do a breakout session. So you're not going to have to choose to watch an SEO class or watch someone making a bow, right? You'll be able to watch any single class at any, like you're not gonna have to choose. So whenever I used to be in the oil and gas industry, we would go to these conferences and you would have to like decide if you wanna watch this class or this class because they're going on at the same time. I hated that. All right, so we're cutting our ribbon tails uh, 13 inches. We need nine of each. Uh, is it a workshop or a creative coaches group? It's gonna be a summit and it's gonna be all the coaches. If you're not part of business coach, so anyone will be able to get a ticket. You don't have to be in the coaching group. When? Uh, we're doing it the last week of July. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Joy, yep, same as school business conferences. 
will it be a similar price? Yeah, we're doing it for the same price as our normal workshops. Um, so basically, so y'all, if you guys got my text message before the last workshop, I asked people what their biggest struggle was in you know their reef business, and over seventy five percent of the people said their biggest struggle was selling the wreath that they make. So we thought it would just be a cool, fun idea to do a workshop like normal, but to tack on more educational classes that would help you guys learn how to sell more. So we could talk a little bit like how to find trends, how to shop for product online, how to price, how to market, uh, what is SEO? So basically taking just a little snippet of our business coaching group and layering it in to the workshop. All right, we need three, uh, nine of these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nicole said, like her, who's got uh, not one sell on Etsy since she started in February. That's right. So, um, me, Kelly, Tammy will all be like on an Etsy panel. And we'll be able to utilize uh, my warehouse where my office is for business stuff. And then this one for creative stuff. So that we can just roll right along while they're setting up. We can be talking business over there. And listen, it's not, okay, you never, uh, it's not going to be like an A to Z class. Like we're going to give you, like if we talk about Etsy, we're going to say, here's five things you need to go do to your Etsy shop today, right? Uh, we it, we want to break it down so that people aren't overwhelmed. Y'all, and I just made that topic up. Like, I don't even know if that's going to be the title or whatever it is. I'm just giving you an example. Like, it's not going to be, let's open an Etsy shop A to Z. Like, we're not trying to overwhelm people in the workshop. We just want to give you a few little things that you can go do to change what you're working on today. All right, we need this one. Y'all, I'm looking at the board. Did I cut these 14 inches? No, okay. I was like, did I put my board down backwards or did I cut it backwards? One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, Sharon, you're not invited to come to my warehouse. It's all online. No worries there. Right, like three steps to take better photos, 
like I don't know I'm just thinking of like all of these little bitty tweaks that y'all could be doing in your business to make your business better three ways to get your audience to talk to you online just little quick actionable stuff All right, let's get rid of these tails. There's a little bug right there. You'll be expecting a litter of puppies that week. Puppies are my favorite. What kind? All right, Pamela. Peniel, I'm going to tell you this. Okay, everyone knows I can be an a-hole, but this is me just being completely real and true. Get over it. Hang on, let me zoom out. Get over it. No one cares about your banner but you. Do not let your banner hold you back from moving forward. Put something on that banner and get your stuff listed for sale, friend. Sylvia, it's going to be a mixture of all kinds of stuff, I'm sure. All right, we're going to fold that over. Y'all, one day Sylvia's going to come hang out with us again. Pam, listen. And understand that I said that with all of the love. Uh, one time, listen, one time, one of our people were stuck because they couldn't decide what color to do their logo. And they literally paused their business for months because of that. All right, we're gonna put our two ribbon tails. We're gonna spread them out a little bit. Sylvia, listen, you should come whenever Tammy's in town because she made me have Mexican food like five times in six days. Y'all, I put the wrong two ribbons together. Is it possible to do the bow too tight? Only if your loops are too small as well. So if it looks like your, um, your bow is like sucked in, like the flower hasn't bloomed yet, your loops are probably too tall, not too tall, too small, or your bow is tucked too far into your mesh. There we go, that's better. Stacy said for her first shop, she did uh, a lot of work for the logo. Second, you did a pink background with your business name and a simple font. No one cares for real, it's true. Y'all, uh, on the Deco Exchange one, I put so much energy, so much money, all kind of stuff, and the branding and the colors and making sure everything is perfect. And then I open up a new one, and it's literally a white box with the name of the store, and it's making sales every single day. Nancy said she's 73. Don't know if she can sell her wreaths. Well, what I'm gonna tell you is don't spend a lot of 
money on supplies first. Figure out what your market looks like. Figure out, uh, do you still know a lot of those teachers? Teachers like to decorate. Figure out the style of wreaths that your neighborhood shops for. Um, you know, one exercise I like people to tell to do is get in your vehicle and go drive around the most expensive neighborhoods in your area and see what's on their front doors. Jacqueline, if I remember right, you're in the business coaching group. I would go to the free class that you have on how to make a logo. Uh, Christine walks you through it step by step. Kim, you can submit a photo for Jordan's review in the creative coaching group. I want real Mexican come to Texas. I'm good with Tex-Mex, so. And I didn't want Mexican five times at all. How do you decide how many tails to add? Uh, however many twists I have, they're each gonna get a tail. Yeah, Carol. It's like, oh, looking for fresh seafood and gumbo in Alabama. I hope it gives her the cramps on the beach tomorrow. That's what I hope. Y'all, I just did it again. For some reason, I really want these, uh, ribbons to go together and they don't I hope she walks all the way down that pier walks through 60 feet of sand gets all nice in position and cramps for all that Mexican food that we ate instead of fresh seafood and all the things that we should have had in Louisiana. And I hope that Brittany is out there with her camera catching the Tammy Shuffle on the beach. Is there a specific reason you chose only to use one and a half inch ribbon? So I've got a four inch, a two and a half, one and a half, and a one and a half. So, no? Uh, Derica did eat some crawfish off my platter.
Would you ever consider making a volleyball sign? I actually have some designed. I just haven't listed them yet. Uh, so we have over a thousand signs that we make in-house listed for sale. And there's probably 300 signs that I've made and haven't had time to list them. Probably 200 tumblers, uh, probably 150 doormats. All designed, ready to go, never listed. Anyone else have that problem? At least they're not all made. The, it's just designed. They're not just like in a pile waiting to be sold. They've just never been listed on the website for sale. We have uh, a few new employees in the office, so I'm hoping that I can train one how to run Etsy so she can help me get some stuff listed for sale. Uh, Pam, we won't uh, have any details on what we will or won't discuss until closer to the date, um, but it's one that we can think about. <clears throat> Am I going to make more ribbon bow bundles? Diane, I can uh, potentially do it. Mexican three to four times a week and you order the same thing and girl I will tell you uh, here they have something called a happy plate and they put the rice then the fajita meat and then the cheese on top of it it's so good how many employees do y'all have uh, we have around 37 employees total I believe Who do I get my ribbon from? Deco Exchange. Judy said that my last shipping class cut her shipping price in half. That's what I like to hear. emailed you with pictures of what to do. Yeah, so we wrote some uh, some SOPs and manuals, so now they have uh, the ability to share step-by-step -step how to do stuff. Has the graphic designer taken some of your workload? No. Donna said we helped her with shipping as well. Is this sign from Deco Exchange? This is, this is not one that we make. Uh, this one is a wooden one. It's got glitter on it. It's super cute. When the workshop is. Uh, Sharon, we don't have anything uh, in stone yet. But if you get on our text list and you keep showing up here, you'll be notified when it is. Right. 
Pam, I do a business Q&A every Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, if you want to join us there, we'll answer all your business questions. Lisa Kellum, I'm glad to see you're back and killing it. All right, y'all, let's clean up our ribbon tails and our bow. To do that, we just fold them wire side to wire side, give it a little snip. You were able to get the files downloaded, awesome. Yeah, I think what's confusing is it tells you to do one thing, but you really have to do something else. It's a little bit crazy. You wish you had all the ribbon that I have. Y'all, I started this business with $500. And we've grown into uh, you know, we do about $11 million in sales uh, every year now. And it all started with $500 and the island in my kitchen. So you do not need to go out and spend thousands of dollars to get started. You don't have to have any type of crazy stuff. Um, just go out there and be smart about your business and uh, listen to your customers and realize that you're not selling a product, you're solving a problem. And if you can solve that problem, you can make more sales. All right, this is where we would normally stop. But whenever I was grabbing my wreath frame, I looked over on the shelf and I saw that we finally had some tubing back in stock. I thought, you know what? Let's use a little bit of our tubing. Let's see. All right. That's rude. It doesn't tell me how much tubing is on here. So let me go look. 20 yards. So 60 feet. All right, I'm gonna cut these in about, let's see. I think I want them to look like that. Y'all, whenever you use tubing, I like to like not cut it, make a little loop and then place it in there and just get an idea of what that's going to look like. So for this particular one, I need my tubing to be about 36 inches, which is what I was going to say, but I wanted to make sure. All right. One thing that you have to make sure that you do when you do tubing is you don't pull on it. Uh, whenever you pull on it, it will stretch and you'll think you're cutting a piece long enough. Watch. You'll think you're cutting a piece long enough and then whenever you go to cut it off, it'll be like, shoop, shrink up. And nobody, nobody wants that. Four. You love using tubing? I don't love using tubing. But I did want to put some tubing and a bow for a door hanger, and I wanted to uh, have an excuse to use some. 
So if I use it on this project, I'll have some left over. Three, six, seven. Y'all also, you know, our business has zero debt. So I think that's super important when starting your business. All right, I'm looking for nine. That's eight. Now I get to save all this. I don't know if I have any patriotic door hangers over there that we can make a bow with. All right. So y'all, with this, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle. Right? Let me see. It's about 12 inches, fold it in half. 12 inches, fold it in half and then pinch it right in the middle to make a nice figure eight. Then we're gonna add this to every other twist around our wreath. And you can see how it just adds a little fun and dimension. Yeah, I'm just doing every other one. Don't do what you do, start it during COVID lockdown. Actually, starting your business during COVID was actually one of the smartest things people could have done. Um, just because so many more people were shopping online versus in person. Now, we still have personal debt, right? We still have car notes and house notes and all those things. But we don't ever go purchase business stuff on an IOU. So we could close the warehouse doors today and not have to worry about paying off, you know, a million dollars in debt. So this is just giving it another layer. And y'all, that just all comes down to, you know, having a plan with, okay, I'm gonna take this money and whenever that's sold or made back, Then I can go invest over here. All right. The economy seems to be killing you personally. Listen, the economy sucks. And I spent $125 filling up my car today. Um, but I will also tell you that uh, wreaths are a luxury item. People spend more money on luxury products whenever the economy is bad. So I would not number one, give up on your business just because you're having a hard time. Okay, that's another thing, right? You have to realize that our personal struggles don't represent our customers' struggles. 
right? So if I only thought about the problems that I have, I would never teach other people Etsy, right? Because it comes natural to me. But I know that my customers struggle with technology, right? I'm solving a problem. Um, so you have to look past the fact that you are making a wreath and you have to figure out what problem you're solving for that person. Whenever people are, uh, whenever wealthy people see an impact in the economy, they tend to spend more money to let other people know that they aren't struggling. So whenever you see the economy in a crisis, you will see luxury vehicles sell more. You will see uh, expensive handbags sell more and things that they let other people know that they're not struggling. So, even if it sucks, and you have to spend more money than you did last week on gas, don't forget to keep posting your product online, sharing your stuff online, tagging people on Instagram and Etsy and all the things, right? Uh, I would not be surprised if you don't see uh, more patriotic stuff selling. Whenever the economy is in trouble, you will see people feel a little bit more patriotic and they want to uh, encourage people to do more things. Y'all, the world is a crazy place. All right. Oh, our heart was crooked. So you love crazy? It's true. So, two things to remember from tonight. Number one, your struggles are not your customer's struggles. And even if you're having a bad day or a hard day or if that extra dollar at the pump is really sucking, uh, all of your customers may not feel the same impact. I'm sure, because most of you are customers at Deco Exchange, you have piles of wreath supplies all over your house. How many of y'all, listen, how many of y'all can look around where you're at right now and see a box from Deco Exchange? I know I can. So maybe for a couple of months, you don't get to buy new supplies. Maybe for a couple of months, I don't get to sell a lot of supplies. But that doesn't mean that you can't go in there and still create and do things and market your business with the stuff that you have on hand, right? Y'all, we're crafters. Most crafters are hoarders, and we have all kinds of supplies everywhere. We got this under control, y'all. All right?
If you're in the business coaching group, I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. All right? Y'all have a good night.